Is there anything better than that sound? Probably not good for you. But f it, I'm trying to get more done in one week than most do in one year. You have to watch this video at 0.75 speed because it's just so much coming at you at once. Why is it that despite having 24 hours in a day, every single one of us on this planet, we're all equal in the amount of time we have, we're definitely not equal in results. Why is it that some people can get more done in a day than most people can do in an entire month? And in this video, I want to teach you not how to get the most out of your time. Cause you can go to videos on productivity advice and okay, organize your day in this minute. Like a lot of productivity advice, have you noticed this? It just teaches you how to be busy. Like how to be a better robot at executing these tasks. Do you ever zoom out and wonder, am I focusing on the right tasks? Cause who cares if you're productive, if you're productive on the wrong things. Busy versus true productivity this is what we're talking about in this video. And man, if you just focus on what uh, these four questions I'll give you in this like higher level perspective, I mean, this is literally the difference between you having five years of busy work versus five years of going towards your purpose. So with that, let's get into it. Should we hit them with the chart? Let's hit them with the chart. Almost hit me with the chart. We're using the Sharpie Magnum, baby. It's the only time I've ever been able to use Magnums in my life. Here we have age zero to 80 years old. Now, if you take your life and divide it up into three major stages, you would have something like this. Phase one, we could call young, zero to 25 years old. You're in college, you're in school, you're learning, you're soaking in information, preparing to get into when you're in phase two, could call this your adulthood. You know, this is you in a career, this is you working, this is you grinding it out all while hoping for the last days, the last 20 years, call this old, seasoned. That's a better word for it, You're, you got experience. This is the narrative that people pass down to you through school. They say, oh, you gotta go to high school, you get out when you're 18 years old, then if you go to college if you're smart, right? And you go to college so you can get a job that you can work for 40 years with the hopes of retiring the last 20 years of your life. That is the standard narrative that's been passed down for probably the last hundred years that everybody subconsciously believes that's life. And without questioning it, most just accept that's how it is. In other words, most people are sleepwalking through life. This is the point I want to get through your head. That if you want to get more done in one week than most people do in a whole year, in fact, I would say an entire decade, maybe even a lifetime, you just wake up. Ben Franklin has one of the hardest hitting quotes. He said that most people die at the age of 25, but we just bury them at age 75. Oof. I heard that when I was in my 20s and it hit me. Now here's what's crazy, all right? Let's add a few more points here. The average life expectancy is right around here, 77 years in the USA when I looked it up before this video. One other stat that just breaks my heart, when surveyed, up to 85% of Americans don't like their job. They literally say they're dissatisfied, like, I wouldn't choose this gig, but you know, I'm, I'm doing what I gotta do. Now, most people are retiring around the age of 65. Life is expensive, inflation, cost of living goes up. So we have this fantasy in our head that, okay, you know, once I'm done working, then I can start living. Like once I push through this career and my kids are out of the house, then I can finally start living for myself. Then I can finally follow my passion or then I can travel the world or sit on the beach sipping pina coladas or whatever that like fantasy is in our head. But the sad reality is that if you don't love what's in here, you're missing out on a majority of your life. You're sleep walking through it. Most people are dying at the age of 25 and we don't bury them till the age of 75. Man, is that the truth. And so what, what is my point here? Like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. It is not over for you. In fact, it's far from over. And in fact, the sooner you saw this video and the sooner you're able to wake up to the illusion of what people have planned for you and the life that others are like subconsciously programming you to live, the sooner you can actually start living and waking up. 
Sleepwalking through life is the number one thing you have to avoid. I'm not even showing you this, like most people who show you this are like, and that's why you gotta start a business. If you're not drop shipping, you're wasting these years. Bit of a tangent, but that can be a fantasy in itself for a lot of people. Most people aren't cut out for that, to be totally honest. And that can cause them to sleepwalk through life, just chasing this one day, one day, one day, and it prevents them from actually living. You don't have to start a business to love your life. Getting rich isn't the only thing, isn't the only way to feel like you're a somebody. In fact, the feeling of you have to be a somebody, that can be the very curse that's holding you back to begin with. That can be the thing that makes you fall asleep and sleepwalk through life, saying, oh yeah, when I'm finally successful, when I'm finally there, when I'm there, when I'm there. I don't know, man, not to go like too deep and tangential here, because uh, sometimes I wonder like how much of our improvement is us just preparing to live versus actually living. Because those are two different things. Like you preparing and learning how to live, even watching these videos and reading these books, this isn't actually living. This is preparing you to go out and live. But if all you're doing is consuming information like this and consuming content, like just preparing, okay, that's how this person says to live the good life. And this person, at some point you got to get out of the house. You got to live your life. At some point you got to realize, what do I actually want? F what everyone else says with the guy on YouTube who's jacked and has a nice car and a business like is he happy I don't know we'll never know at a certain point you choose to wake up for yourself and at the moment you wake up for yourself and choose which will give you four questions here next that is the moment that you get more done than most people do in a year in a decade because you're waking up, you're not sleepwalking. You're not waiting till you're 75 years old to get buried and you died at 25. Is this first part making sense? Is this first part giving you an existential crisis? <laughs> no, wrong mission. So now I have a question for you. Who are the best people at helping you level up? Are they the ones with the answers, people telling you what to do? I don't think so. I think that's a very lazy, childish way. Like we go looking for the answers in school, our parents, is this okay? Does society accept me for this? Like we wanna to be told what to do. That's the reason you're stuck because you're looking to other people to decide what should you do. The best coaches don't have the answers, they have the questions. And so in this remainder of this video, I know you're thinking, well, how? How do I actually apply this? I wanna give you four questions. And I don't want this to be another video that you, you know, forget about and say, okay, that's on my to-do list for later. I really want you to write down these four questions and promise me that tomorrow morning, you're gonna go to a coffee shop, you're gonna order the biggest freaking coffee they got, you're gonna sit down with a journal and you're gonna answer these four questions. You do that, I promise you this week, you will get more done than most people do in an entire year because this is how you wake up from the narrative that is subconsciously just pounded into you from society, from school, from your parents. We got a deal? All right, cool. Let's do it. Magnum for the second time today. Two times in one day. Never been able to do that. These are ranked in order of importance where I would spend and allocate a majority of your time, by the way. Question number one. What would I do if I was fearless and could not fail. What would you do if you were fearless and could not fail? You have to answer this question in that specific syntax. Fearless and could not fail. There's only two motivators for human beings, pain and pleasure. You're either working towards something you want or you're running away trying to avoid something that happened to you or that's painful. So what would you do if you were fearless and could not fail? Oftentimes we have these dreams and these seedlings that perk up in your mind, and watch how fast you shoot it down. Like, hey, that person's posting covers on YouTube. Why don't you post something on there? Or like, you're inspired by them. Why, why don't you do that? And then you shoot it down with, oh no, you don't have the gear, you don't have the skill, you'll get laughed at, it'll fail, it's a waste of time, you're too busy, it's too expensive, it's too saturated, boom. Wow, that person just walks up to them and starts a conversation. He's attracted, he walks up and they're talking. What if I did that? No, you're gonna get rejected, everyone's gonna watch you, it's gonna be embarrassing, you're gonna be humiliated, etc. Every time you have the solution come up, there's another part of you that's shooting it down, out of fear. And so when you remove fearless, could not fail and you remove the possibility of failure, what do you wanna do? You might question yourself and be like, I would not be working the same job. 
if you would be working that same job or in that career, congrats, that's good data. But if you're in the 85% I mentioned earlier who don't like their job and what they're doing, well then the reason they're staying stuck is out of comfort and it's risky. And the reason they view it as risky is because they don't answer this question of like, let's just explore what could happen if you were fearless and could not fail. I want you tomorrow to list as many of these options as possible. If you want our help reinventing yourself, I'll link down below our metamorphic coaching program where we help individuals like you go from watching all this education that's really just entertainment into implementing it. I've worked with over 900 people just like you watching the YouTube videos being like, how the heck do I use this? Is my life any different than it was last year? Completely wipe the slate clean, reinvent yourself, and normally if you're going through like a transitory time, break up, wanting to switch jobs, uh, getting out of college, like, like those big moments, we always say your breakdowns can be breakthroughs if you use them. It's the perfect time. So if you're someone who's looking to ask the tough questions, reinvent yourself, then I'll link down below where you can talk to one of our coaches for free. See if it's for you. Question number two, let's mix it up. What will I be most proud of one year from today? What are you, a year from today, going to be most proud of? I think it's very important to use the word proud of. I'm not talking about egoic pride, like, look at me, I'm the man. I'm feeling proud of your character, that's very different. My point, what will you be most proud of a year from now? Is it getting in the best shape of your life? And not just talking about it and saying it with empty words, but like actually putting some focus and energy behind it. Is it committing in your relationship? Getting married, getting engaged. Maybe this is the year that happens. Finally getting out of debt, fixing the finances. Is it transitioning jobs and making a big leap that you've been putting off? Whatever it is, I'm just throwing out ideas here. What are you going to be most proud of a year from now? Man, this could be its own video, but um, one of the things I've been processing and playing with this year, uh, you know, this is probably 15 years in the self-improvement space, believe it or not, making videos for 12 is there's kind of two camps with self-improvement I've realized. The first camp is like very heavy and it's almost approaching self-improvement as self-hate. And it's really toxic. Take your shirt off and say you're fat, you're a loser in the mirror and that should motivate you. Like it's motivating you out of fear. This other camp is motivating yourself out of excitement and what's best for you and what you want to do. This is like I'm afraid to get in trouble and it's very childish. Total different energy here. I remember running this business and I was operating out of this camp like, okay, I'm gonna force myself to do things when I don't feel like it. I'm going to use discipline because discipline is freedom. All these things that sound good in TikTok and Instagram sound bites, but um, if you use them and let them be your north stars and guiding principles, you're gonna end up with a life that you resist a lot of. And I had to ask myself, why am I forcing things? Do I want my whole life to feel like I'm forcing myself to do things because I don't feel like it? Why don't I feel like doing things? And so that's where this camp comes. And you know, I pivoted my whole business a while ago. Dude, I feel like every year I'm pivoting and reinventing yourself and trying to find ways that are not lazy, right? Where you're avoiding effort, but feel more effortless because they're more in line. Friction comes when grooves are misaligned. You got two gears grinding against each other. That's a lot of friction. And eventually they're either gonna grind themselves to where they fit and there's not a lot of friction or they're gonna stop the whole machine and it breaks. And that's kind of what happens when you grind on yourself. You're gonna have a lot of friction, you're either gonna burn the heck out, and you're gonna stop everything, or you're gonna find a way to make it work and make it more effortless. I hope that point makes sense. So this question, what will I be most proud of one year from today? I think that when you go after feeling excited, feeling proud, making things fun, these are ways you can tap more into this effortless self-improvement instead of this just like heaviness and this grinding and forcing things, you know? But question number three might be the most important one. What are the three things I need to stop doing? I want you to identify three things that if you didn't do, would help you get out of your own way and would be better for you. Getting more done in one week than most do in an entire year by waking up, choosing what you want, Yes, that comes from what you're doing. But I've found, and haven't you noticed this, 
Success is equal parts about what you're not doing. In the same way, we could use dieting as an example. You know, I got a few extra LBs on me. I'm trying to get ready for beach season here, tracking some calories. I learned very quickly how easy it is to stop eating a thousand calories versus how hard it is to try and burn a thousand calories. You know, you want to burn a thousand calories, go on a two hour run and don't stop. <laughs> That's literally the amount of effort it takes to burn a thousand calories. Or we could just not binge eat at night and we don't need the two hour run every single day. Penny saved is a penny earned kind of thing. The point for you here, what are the three things detracting from your happiness? What are the three things that are robbing you of your energy? And man, if you can just find what three things you need to stop doing, I think this year is gonna unlock a lot of growth for you. But perhaps my favorite question that I want you to ask yourself tomorrow at that coffee shop, my friend, is question number four. This one is very near and dear to me. It's something throughout my 20s that has saved me years. Just memorize this question. Whenever you're stuck, ask yourself this. What do you ask? You ask yourself question number four. What advice would I give someone else in my exact same situation? You right now in your situation, if you ever feel stuck, distance yourself from it. Take a step back. Pretend it's not you in this situation. It's your close friend or a family member. What advice would you tell them? Ah, oh, dude, I just don't know what to do about this job. Like, I don't like it, I'm drained, I don't like my boss, I don't wanna be here in the next five years. Pretend that's not you. What advice would you give that person? I don't know what to do about my relationship, pretend it's not you. What advice would you give to that person? Now why do this? Why like create a buffer between you and your problems or your confusion? Well, the simple fact that you've realized, I'm sure, it's easier to give advice than take it. I don't think this is a hypocritical thing. I don't think this is a malicious thing. I think that we always know every single detail and the same thinking that caused the problem we're trying to use to get out of the problem. So the way you do that and step out of the show, pretend it's not your problem, pretend it's someone else's. And you're way more objective that way. Instead of like your subjective experience, I feel like this is the right, and like mm, feelings are important, yes. Gut feelings and instincts for sure. But logically, you know, sometimes we're reading too much into things or we make things 10 times harder than they need to be. So what advice would you give someone else in your exact same situation? To recap what you learned, we went over how to get more done this week than most people do in an entire year. How do you do that? You don't do that through some productivity hack or planning your day in certain increments. All that can help. But if you never wake up to the sleepwalking nature of life most people are going through and living in, it doesn't matter. It's straightening deck chairs on a Titanic. The very thing you need to do to get more done, stop wasting your life, is wake up. Make the choice. How do you do that? You ask yourself, in my opinion, these four questions. You're gonna do that either today or tomorrow. Make some time, take an hour, take two hours, but please write these down and do these. And if you don't do these, no self-improvement video is gonna matter. No book you read is gonna matter. No life philosophy. Like These are the most important things you can ask yourself if you truly want to get ahead this week and make it way more productive than most people spend an entire year avoiding. All right, we do it. Is that useful? Let me know in the comments like this. Uh, do you like the vibe? Do you like the format? Love feedback here. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Clark. Stop settling. Start living. See you in the next one. Peace.